What's going on, guys? Uh, I think it's time. It's time for us to put together Emulation Station from the ground up. Uh, I've seen enough questions about how to get games running and how to get Emulation Station running and all that, so we're going to do it. Um, we're not going to do it with RetroArch. We're just going to do a very simple, basic, bare-bones setup. If you've already gotten this far, stop the video. You're not going to learn anything. I don't know. Maybe you will. Uh, but gonna try to make this as relative and recent as possible as of uh, december 15th 2016 so when this video is 10 years old and nobody knows what the heck i'm talking about you know that's why uh i've got uh some things on my desktop here uh, that you will need and i am going to try to provide everything as much as humanly possible uh, digitally in the comments below and stuff like that and you're going to kind of see the process so that way there's not a whole lot of guesswork so uh, this could turn out to be a really long video. Feel free to skip around and try to pick up where we left off or, you know, throw comments and say, this is terrible. Uh, but I think it's going to be pretty good. I, I kind of practiced ahead of time to make sure that there wasn't any, uh, you know, screw ups or anything like that, you know. So, uh, all right. So we got our desktop. We got everything going here. And I've already downloaded and got a couple of things ready. And uh, right in this neat little 7-zip uh, package is everything that you should need to. Hooray! Uh, so I'll put that on Dropbox, I'll put it in the link below, and you can click on it and download it, um, or you can go get it yourself, which is not that hard to do. I will put the links in the description below as far as emulationstation.org. Um, there's a place to get the uh, Fusion um, emulator that we're going to run, and um, what else did I put in there? Ah, the ES Systems config file. Uh, all of those three are pretty much all you're going to need. So we'll take a look at them. Here they are. Fantastic. Great. And they're here on the desktop as well. So I'll put that down there back in its place. And I've kind of unzipped some things and all that. The only thing I'm not providing is the ROM itself. Uh, just let's stay <clears throat> quote unquote legal. You know, this is my legally obtained ROM <laughs> of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So, uh, here we go. First step is going to be clicking on the Emulation Station install. So, we will click yes for OK. I don't think the thing's going to record the uh, agreement there or whatever. Um, leave everything the same. You know, I'm flying through this kind of quickly. I agree. Leave all the check marks there, including Microsoft Visual C++. You need that in order for it to run. That's not optional. Uh, the desktop shortcut is, of course, we will leave that. Um, leave this the same, you know, just in terms of trying to make this, um, as typical and simple as possible. We're going to use all the defaults here. Um, next. Yay. Well, and start menu and folder and all that crap, you know, stuff, whatever. Finish. Great. Fantastic. Okay. So we're going to put this over here just to make sure that we are kind of making a distinction between, you know, our install stuff and what's installed and what's going on. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring up a folder, just your Explorer folder, and now you're going to want to go to the Emulation Station folder. This is something that maybe some of you might have got confused about. There's actually two of them. Oh, uh, one is going to be in your program files, just like we saw where the installation path was. The other one, which you're actually going to want to play with, is under your users. So this PC, C, users. Uh, this is what I named my uh, computer, which is Droid, and then dot emulation station. Oh, right. This is where you kind of want to live and breathe. Don't screw with the program files one. Um, I've seen some people uh, on other YouTube channels kind of go there first, you know, <laughs> and start messing with that, and then they have to backtrack and all that. So uh, once you're done with that, the next step is going to be to create a couple of different folders. Um, we're going to create three of them, I think. Yeah, so uh, first one is going to be the systems folder. Boom. That's very difficult to do. Next is going to be the ROMs folder. And um, I don't know, maybe it's two. We'll, we'll, we'll remember as we go along. I'm doing this on the fly here. And uh, it's been a long day already. So uh, that's good. Done with that part. Next is going to be taking your configuration file and dumping it into here. 
Um, now, when you run Emulation Station for the first time, it will scream at you and say, you didn't set up anything, you need to do it. We're kind of skipping that step or getting ahead of it by automatically dumping in our own systems config file. Uh, that way, you know, it doesn't scream at us. Notice how we haven't actually opened the executable yet. We haven't even done that. We don't need to. Knowing ahead of time, on my part, I know that if I do that, it's just going to bark at me. So um, what you can do is you can right click on it. I really encourage everybody to use Notepad++. Super nice. It's so much better than stupid Notepad. Uh, if you want, pause the video, go download it, whatever. After the video is done, you want to try this, go download it. It's so nice, so easy, so simple. I use it for this. I use it for work. I use it for everything. So uh, go ahead and open it up, and you get a nice, beautiful view. And this is what I've put together. This is not complicated at all. This is basically the very basic format of what the emulation station, you know, people that built it wants you to do. They want you to put it together like this. Um, our test is going to be using uh, the Sega Genesis Fusion, um, which I'm gonna call it uh, emulator. So I've kind of just built this all together and I encourage you that if you download it or you just wanna copy it from the text on the screen here, uh, you use the same format because this is exactly how they want you to use it. You can then take this and copy it as million times as you want to in this config file to make other systems. Um, the static things that need to stay are the things like the bracket slash name, the bracket slash file name, path, anything with these brackets in here, you know, uh, those need to stay. The things inside of them will definitely change based on the system that you're putting in there. Um, and you can go all over the internet and everything and find examples of other systems and stuff like that. And maybe I'll try to provide that in the zip file too. Maybe I'll add a little bit more after this. Um, the other thing that needs to be stay static is this uh, little quote unquote percent ROM underscore raw. And here's more brackets right here. This little thing over here, this home path. You can actually keep all this the same right up until about here. And then you'll start changing out like other stuff. You'll learn as we go along here where that goes. So I've actually already got this done. So we created our system folder and we also created our ROMs folder. And you notice, I'll just learn here, that we have our dot emulation station ROMs, dot emulation station ROMs, and then we're gonna make a Genesis one in there. Ah, that was, that was the third folder, that's right. So we're going here, make another folder. Make another folder. Yes. Ray. Make sure we spell it correctly, or at least the same way that it's in here. Uh, and then, you know what we'll do? We're going to take our ROM and we're going to drop it in there. Hooray. All right. So we have step two done, if that's step two. Uh, so, so far, good. Yes. Okay. So we've got our three folders in here. Two of them we created, the ROMs and the systems. Nothing's in systems yet. That's okay. And then in our ROMs, we have Genesis. And what you will do is say you want Nintendo in here, uh, NES. So you would do like that and then stick NES ones in there. Uh, still keep it simple though. So don't worry about it from here. Um, next step, systems. So we have our stuff ready. We know that from our config file, they're pointing to the right location. Dot emulation station, ROM, systems, themes, whatever. So this exists in here and knows how to point to it with this tilde slash, you know, all this kind of stuff, home path. Leave all this in here as a standard install. If you decide to do a different install and complicate things some, you're gonna have to change these things up. You're gonna have to change home path, to like C colon and something else in there, whatever. Okay, so. Um, just for testing purposes, we're going to kind of mimic this, which is already in here. Uh, or you could create your folder first and then fill in in the config file where all that exists. So, hope you're not going too fast. Watch it again if you need to. <laughs> now I'm flying through here. Uh, so, with our assistance, we're going to create a... Wait, we might not even need to create it. Yeah, we're just going to cheat. So, we're going to take Fusion and we're just going to drop it in our systems. Congratulations, you know how to drag and drop. 
And we'll notice that it's looking for system fusion slash. So we're just going to rename this so that way the naming is perfect. And that is key. If you can't do anything else with emulation station, at least, at least, uh, make it all your naming correct. Don't have a capital in one and a non-capital in the other. Or have fusion one, but it says fusion in the thing. And right now my computer is choking. So uh, that's okay. Of course it's choking. I think uh, it just died. Okay. Let's try to break it up again. This is in real time, folks. This is in real time here. No, no tricks. No, no nothing. All right. I uh, didn't rename it. Hold on. Try it again. It just shows you. I'm like, I'm not even going to edit this. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't want to do it. Okay. That's okay. We're going to let it die again here. Uh, maybe I should edit it now. <laughs> uh, actually, so what we can do, great, 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 since we have a problem here, and, you know, this will be a using our learning technique here. We're going to go back in so you know where it is, we know where it is, we know where it is, and we're going to go open it up. So, since that's not working, and who knows why, I uh, probably need to restart my computer, which it should be doing fine. We are going to alter our theme. Three, six, four. Hey, hey, so now our path is correct. Uh, make sure we save it. And just a little note, in Notepad++, if you see this little asterisk at the beginning, it means that you've made changes and it hasn't been saved yet. Control S, ah, now it's gone, meaning that no changes, no new changes have gone in from the current you know, file. So now we have all the way down. So this matches this, which is good. So. We got dot emulation station systems vision uh, 364, which is uh, version three uh, 3.64 is the version, you know. So if you want to look at that, um, the reason why I pick Fusion is it's very, very simple, easy, straightforward. Uh, if you just decide to run it on your own, this is what you get. Perfect. Very, very simple, very, very easy. Um, and you could do that right now. You could use that as is if you just wanted to start playing Sega games. Uh, yeah, so we're not even going to worry about um, setting up the controller or anything for that. I'll let you do that later. All you would do is just open this up, hit options, set config, and then you would dial in, you know, your uh, gamepad. You know, if you have like a Xbox controller or you want custom keys, you know, to control Sonic, you know, or Kid Chameleon or insert a sega game actually it's more than sega it's sega master system and game gear and all that kind of stuff so anyways um back to our thing so uh we have that all dialed in we're good to go with that um also mentioned to here uh we have the extensions and these are all the common like sega extensions uh we'll go back to our roms and take a look at our game and you'll notice that this is a dot zip now, I can do one of two things. I can either open the zip file and you will see that it is a .gen, which is already in here. Or, there's a second option. And this might help you recognize more games, like say you're putting games in. I can put in .zip. Save it. Now, it'll recognize that and the emulator will run a zip game. So, some do, some don't. This one does. So, I can do one of two different things. I can either unzip all my games, or if the emulator knows how to run zip games, just make sure that my extensions that it recognizes are .zip. Hooray! So, learning, progress, all right. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to make sure everything looks good, um, themes are fine, our config is fine, our config is saved, we're going to close that down, and... I think we're ready to start it. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our handy dandy Xbox controller and make sure that our dongle of the USB is plugged in, which it is. So I'm going to turn on the Xbox controller. All right. And I didn't hear a ding, but I think that's because it's uh sounds not coming through my headset here. Uh, we're going to start it up. So I'm going to put this back over here since Windows crashed like three times. And 
Hopefully this will record. Hey, gamepad detected, hold A button. So we're gonna hold down A. And now I'm gonna do up, down, left, right, A, B, start, select. And I do the triggers at the top. So this is page up, page down. And my controller just disconnected. Man, I'm having crazy issues. Let's try page down one more time. It connects. All right, so we're going to try that one more time. Maybe it won't ha have me do it. Okay, let's try it again. All right, up, down, left, right, A, B, start, select, page up, page down. Okay, ha <laughs> ha. And, hey, look, we have Genesis, and we push side to side, it doesn't go anywhere. Why? Because we have one game. A, and Sonic the Hedgehog. Woohoo! We are in business. So... Instead of getting all fancy and getting all the artwork and everything, let's just hit A. And what happens? Nothing. All right. Well, okay. So uh, this is a weird transition here, but I actually did have to stop it because I had to restart my computer. It just was going nuts on me, and I was scared that the video didn't record in the first place. Continuing on. So where we left off, I know that wasn't a big leave off for you, but it was for me. It's been like an hour now or something. I don't know. Uh, is It's not working. Why isn't it working? Well, this is not on purpose. This is still in real time, you know, and everything. Is um, uh, looking at our systems config here again. We'll want to make sure we match everything correctly. And maybe there's something blaringly obvious that you guys are seeing already. You're like, you're an idiot. And I'm like, yeah, I probably am. And so we're looking here and making sure everything is right, gameless, uh, was created, you know, because we now we have our Genesis game in there. That's all created and everything. Our ROMs, ROMs, system. Aha! Ah, <laughs> uh, there we are. Okay, so look at this. Hey, systems folder here and system folder here. So we got to make a decision. Do we want to say it's systems or do you want to say it's the system folder? Uh, I'm just going to say systems. Save. Rat. So, uh, I bet you anything that was it. All right, so let's try it again. Okay. No game pads were detected. Start a game pad up. Got my trusty Xbox 360 controller here. Oh, yeah. You need to have that on before you do it. Learning. And, hey, it's already up. So, yeah, it saved our config from before. So, Genesis. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. <gasps> Booyah! Hey, look at that. It started up and Sega! loud in my headphones. <laughs> uh, okay, I hope they'll turn that down if it's too loud. Boom. That's it. We got it working. That's all there is to it. From there, it's all tweaking. It's all getting things together. It's going back into the systems folder, opening Fusion, and making it to run on full screen and making sure that the configuration is done properly and all that kind of stuff. That's it. I'm not gonna add any more to it. I'm just going to leave it as is and maybe chop this up a little bit so it's a little bit more cleaner, but that's the real gist of how this all works is, and we'll just go through it real quick. So we installed our executable. We put our uh, systems uh, folder in with our emulator. We put our ROMs folder in with our ROM and we put our systems config in here. We made sure that it fit. In fact, we had some screw ups too. Totally happens. Like, totally that's what it happens all the time. Uh, this doesn't have to say anything specific, it just has to match what you have. So we can then copy this and put it in and you would do the exact same thing for Super Nintendo and all that kind of stuff. So there may be more that you want this to do, but if you're having problems, do this first. This is basically a glorified front end that plays only one Sega game. <laughs> All right. So I leave you with this. Throw the comments and questions in below. Like if you like. If you didn't learn anything, congratulations. You're smarter than me. And um, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Happy emulating.